Hey kids, it's Miss Sasha. Welcome back to art class. I'm super excited to be here today. Today we're going to talk all about frogs and their complex life cycle. We're going to learn some fun frog facts and we're going to draw a frog using simple directions, lines, and shapes. We all know frogs are known for their jumping abilities, their croaking sounds, their bulging eyes, and their slimy skin. They live all over the world and are among the most diverse animals of the world. There are more than 6,000 frog species and over 100 of those are poisonous. Frogs are amphibians. What's an amphibian? Amphibians are cold-blooded vertebrae. Well, what's a vertebrae? It's a backbone, right? Like humans have or mammals. Also birds have vertebrae, reptiles and fish. Their skin is smooth and slimy. Amphibians breathe through their skin as well as their lungs. They have a really complex life cycle. Many species of amphibians vocalize and they make the sound of a frog, right? Also called a croak or a ribbit, a chirp or a hoot. All amphibians spend part of their life in the water and part on land, which is how they've earned their name amphibian which comes from a Greek word meaning double life. These animals are born with gills and some outgrow them as they transform into adults. Others ret retain them for their entire lives. So let's talk about a frog's complex life cycle. It's in four stages of transformation. Let's get started, okay? The first stage is the first phase of their life cycle. It's this right here which is the eggs. There's over a thousand eggs that they lay in or near the water. It's covered in a jelly-like substance, so it makes the eggs very slippery and protects them from other animals eating their eggs. So this is a pile of eggs that the frog has laid, right? Um, the second stage of a frog's complex life cycle is called the tadpole. It's the tadpole is disguised. It doesn't look like a frog, but rather more like a fish, right? And a tadpole breathes through its gills and moves a lot like a fish. Um, in the beginning, the tadpole has no legs, but it will eventually start to grow the two back legs, or we also call them the hind legs. It also has a really long tail. Remember, it swims like a little fish. Right? Tadpoles eat small water plants and lots of algae. At this stage, the tadpole begins to develop its lungs so that it can breathe out of water when it becomes a frog. With all these changes, the tadpole looks a bit more like a small frog, and it takes about 21 days for this transformation to happen. So it goes from egg to tadpole. Some people call these polywogs. What do you call a tadpole? So the third stage of a frog's complex life cycle is called the froglet, right? The froglet, froglet starts to develop two front legs, or we call them four legs, the legs in the front, these right here, okay? And the tail of the froglet starts to shrink, right? The froglet develops lungs and gills and the gills start to disappear because the froglet can now float above the water and breathe the air, right? The froglet starts to become a young frog. Looks a lot like a frog. Remember, it's got its hind legs, its forelegs, and this little tail starts to shrink, right? It starts to be able to breathe in the water and above the water, right? Um, the fourth stage is the adult frog. Here's a few pictures of adult frogs. Um, they can leave the water and they can live on the land, right? the frog's tail disappears completely. As you can see, a frog does not have a tail, right? It starts to eat insects, right? And then the mother frogs can now start to begin to lay eggs. Look at these pictures up here. Check out these two frogs. I wonder, do you see a difference in them? Look at these people's hands. Look at this thumb. This is called the Goliath frog. Goliath means really, really big. And we're not kidding when we say really, really big. This is the largest frog in the world. It grows up to 12 and a half inches. That's the length of your ruler. 
Ask a teacher to show you a ruler and that frog is as big or as long as a ruler. And it can weigh up to seven pounds, a little bit above seven pounds, which that's the size of like some cats. My cat weighs seven pounds. That's the same size as this Goliath frog, right? Look at this, this is someone's thumb. Put your thumb out in front of you. Imagine the tiniest of all frogs sitting on the top of your little bitty thumb. And for such a tiny frog, this frog has a very long name. Let's see if I can pronounce it. It's called Pedophryniamoensis. Pedophryniamoensis. Can you say that? Pedophryniamoensis. That is the name of the smallest frog. They discovered this frog in New Guinea. So we won't see this tiny, tiny frog here in the United States. But we do have a little frog called the little grass frog. And it's the smallest species of chorus frog, meaning singing frogs, that you might find in the southeastern United States. But remember, we won't see the Goliath frog here, although we do have some pretty big frogs. And we won't see this little tiny frog. But we do have tiny frogs in the United States, right? So the adult frogs, they start to eat insects that they catch with their long, sticky tongue. Can you think of some insects that a frog might eat? How about mosquitoes? I wish they would eat all the mosquitoes. Frogs can eat mosquitoes, dragonflies, moths. They can eat snails and slugs and worms. Remember, the young tadpoles feed off of the algae, but then they become carnivorous or meat eaters, which is when they start to eat the bigger insects, the snails, the slugs, the frogs, the little um, flying beetles and things like that. Um, frogs are a lot more active at night. Like other amphibians, frogs can breathe through their skin, but they can only do so if their skin is moist. And moist means like wet or damp, right? So the frogs are active at night, which is when the air is more humid, right? You know, like at night, whenever it feels kind of wet outside, some people, you know, you can, you can kind of feel the air. It's so thick, that would be humid. Frogs do much better because their skin needs to be moist, right? Even though the frogs are active at night, they spend a good bit of their time sitting very, very still, kind of blending in to their environment. But where do they go at night? I mean, that's when they're most active, even though they like to sit still. They sleep during the heat of the day. They bury themselves under like damp leaves or rotting wood, large stones. At my house, I have a frog house. It's like a little ceramic. It looks like a big um, mushroom and it's got a little area for them to hop in. It stays cool and damp in there so their skin can stay hydrated, right? The sun dehydrates skin of a frog. That's why during the day it's not good for them to be outside. And so that it's a lot safer them, for them to be out at night, okay? So I want you to look up at these pictures again. Here's the smallest frog. Here's the biggest frog, the Goliath frog. Here's our life cycle, right? And I have these other two frogs. I want to show you how they climb up the wall. And then also look at this. Frogs come in tons and tons and tons of different colors. This one is black and yellow stripes, almost like a bumblebee, but this is a frog. See their slimy skin? Look at this one. This is a bright blue frog. Just remember that a lot of times the most beautiful frogs with the most colors are probably poisonous. So here's a blue one. This one has little polka dots, right? And here's a red one with very little polka dots. It's got little blue fingers. And this one's got several different colors, lots of different patterns on it, right? right? So now is a good time for us to get our supplies out. You're gonna need one piece of white paper. You're gonna need a black crayon, a green crayon for us to get started. We're gonna draw our frog together and then we're gonna go ahead and color it in, okay? So get your colors together, get your black, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. You got everything? Great. Put your papers down in front of you, and let's just kind of warm up our, our hands just a little bit. Maybe 
twist them around, maybe one finger at a time, wiggle them, maybe put all your fingers together, put your hands, your palms together, out, whoop, like an octopus, right, back and forth, back and forth, perfect, get your hands, wiggle them, let's do a little wiggle, maybe wave to your neighbor, wave to your other neighbor, wave up high, wave down low, do a little wrist twist, maybe go around and around and around and around, back and forth. Windshield wipers, back and forth. Windshield wipers, back and forth. I like to warm up my hands a little bit so that um, they're ready for drawing, right? Sometimes all day long, if you, sometimes you shake your hands out and get them all awake, okay? So let's go ahead. We're going to start with our paper in front of it. Put it in front of you horizontally or wide. Wide. Good. We're going to fold it so that we have a crease all the way across our paper. Okay, watch. You're going to take the bottom here by your tummy, and I want you to push it up and make those corners meet, and go ahead and crease that paper real good, and then open it. Flatten it out, get your black crayon, got it? All right, we're going to start by drawing our little frog. I want you to find the very middle of your paper, right here, and right above there I want you to put two little oval nostrils, not too big, two little oval nostrils. Our frog has two little frog holes right here, right, so he can do some breathing, make bubbles, right? Perfect. We're going to make this curved line underneath our dots. We're going to go from the crease or the fold to the fold. If you go really wide, your frog's going to be that big. If you do a very little curved line, it's going to be a very small frog. We want a medium-sized frog. Okay, watch. I'm going to go from the fold underneath his nostrils to the other side of the fold. Okay? Got it? That's this line right here. The next line we're going to do is the top of his little frog head. Okay? Don't go all the way up. You won't have room for his bulging eyes. Okay, watch. We're going to go up and around and back to the other side. I've created his head right above his little mouth, right? Remember, our frog has bulging eyes, so we're going to do one step at a time to do his little eyes, okay? One on this side and one on this side. Remember, our frog is symmetrical. He's the same on both sides. So on this side, put a little circle and color it in, and on this side, put a little circle and color it in. It makes it look like his little frog eyes are floating, but we're going to attach them in just a minute two little colored in black circles. Okay? Perfect. The next line or shape that we're going to draw is a circle around that dot. Watch. Around and around. It's like a circle inside of a circle or a spot inside of a circle. Perfect. We're going to make one more circle. We're going to make sure if your eyes aren't touching your frog's head, this time they are. Watch. I'm going to start at his head. I'm going to go around. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. See? Two bulging eyes. One cool thing to know about frogs' bulging eyes is that uh, their eyes allow them to see all around, like in the front and the sides and partially behind them, almost like an owl does. You know, an owl can turn his head all the way. Well, they can turn their eyes all the way around to the left, to the right, and almost all the way to the back, right? So those eyes are pretty important, okay? So the next thing we're going to draw is this little horizontal line. This is the bottom of our frog's little body. He's sitting in the pond or next to the pond. So we're not gonna draw it at the very bottom. We're gonna move it up a little bit. It's not as wide as his head, watch. Is that gonna be long enough? 
Probably not. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Okay, look. See, it's not as long as his head. It's shorter. It's a horizontal line. Okay. Are y'all with me? Give me a thumbs up if you are. Perfect. Okay. The next two lines that we're going to make are going to be diagonal. Okay. They're going to be slanted lines. Remember, our frog is symmetrical. Whatever we do on the right, we have to do on the left. Whatever we do on the left, we have to do on the right, okay? So I'm gonna start at this corner right here where our two lines for his little head meet, and I'm gonna go down diagonal to the end of this horizontal line. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, watch. See? How's that? Pretty good, okay. So our frog looks pretty silly right now. He doesn't have any legs. We're gonna go ahead and work on those legs right now, okay? We're gonna do these two lines that come out to the side. Watch, here and here. This is part of his hind legs or his back legs, okay? Now we're gonna make another diagonal line. Watch, diagonal on that side and diagonal on this side. It's the same on both sides. So now we're starting our frog's hind legs. Okay. We're gonna do a zigzag line and connect these two lines. Watch. Watch. See? On the ends of those zigzags, I want you to put a circle, watch. These are his sticky pads. Look, just like on this guy. Tiny sticky pads. Okay. Perfect. Let's go ahead and finish off his hind legs or his back legs. In between this, these two diagonal lines, we're gonna make a long diagonal line. Not all the way to the crease. Okay, ready? We're gonna make a curved line around the end of that line, watch. I'm gonna start on my frog's body. I'm gonna go around that line, all the way down to the leg or to the dot, watch. I'm gonna start on his body. I'm not starting on his head, I'm starting on his body. I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna stop when I hit the frog. Those are his hind legs, his jumping legs, okay? All right, perfect. Now we can work on his front legs. Remember, his four legs, the ones in the front. The ones in the back are used for jumping, and these are used for standing. Okay, so we're gonna start with these two lines in the front. Watch, line, line. The next one will be here, line, line. Like two 11s, 11, 11. And we're gonna do a zigzag line again. Watch. You can do zigzag. Look, if you just have three zigs and three zags, that's fine. I have four. On the ends of those, we have to put their sticky pads. Look, they can be smaller or bigger, you decide. Perfect. We've drawn our frog. Let's go ahead and get our crayons, our green ones. I have two shades of green. If you only have one shade of green, that's fine. No big deal. And I'm going to start coloring my frog. Watch. I might want to do it darker on his mouth. You can just watch me for a second. Maybe darker around his, the top. Maybe darker around his little nose. And then I might fill it in with that light green. Make it look like slimy frog skin. Look at that. Okay. Go ahead and color that in. I'm going to color in, ooh, this is important. Let's color his yellow eyes. 
Or if you want a red-eyed tree frog, you can color them red, right? Either way is fine. Around that, I might do the light green. If you only have light green, that's fine too. Look. How's that? How's your frog coming? Give me a thumbs up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and color in maybe his hind legs. I might put a little bit of dark green and fill it in with light green. You might do it all dark green. You might do it all light green. That's fine. Now you know how to draw a frog so you could have any one of those colorful frogs that I showed you earlier. You can make up your own frog. Right, you can make a really good frog story. I'm gonna do his little front legs. Maybe fill in the, the rest here with the light green. You could always give him some spots if you want. Maybe a few on his head. Let's see, frogs are the first land animals that had vocal cords. So when you hear the croaking at night, right, and you're like, oh, that sounds like a frog. It probably is, right? And they're really loud sometimes, especially if you live by the water or you're camping, you might hear lots of frog sounds. Something interesting to know about a frog is that they go back to their same pond every year. Just like you go back to your same house every night, frogs go back to their same pond. They're familiar with it. They know the land, the layout of the pond, right? And someone asked me, do you think frogs are lonely? Do you think they're lonely? Well, they're not really social animals. They don't really hang out. They don't have frog parties or frog sleepovers, right? So they don't really get lonely. They like to be by themselves, right? They like to be find out where all the mosquitoes are so they can fill their bellies, their little frog bellies. So. They do not get lonely. I'm gonna color in this last little feet. And then I'm going to color in my sticky pads with orange. If you want red, you can, whatever. You can color them with whatever color you want. Frogs don't really drink water with their mouths, right? They drink by absorbing the water through their skin, right? They, they, need, they need to be by the water so they can do that absorbing, right? Remember, that's how they drink their water, right? Did you know that frogs can leap more than 20 times their body length? So if a frog is this big, they can leap like this far, 20 times their length. So I put this frog in a little pond and we can do the same if you want to grab your blue. I did like a little horizon line of blue. And I was real careful to color in around his sticky little toes. See that? Be real careful. If you want to put some little swirls in the water, like something just jumped in next to the frog, you know how to do spirals. We've been talking about spirals a lot, right? You can also take your green and have like some um, cattail plants, right? Remember, those are plants that don't have flowers. Their flower is this little brown tube that looks like a hot dog on a stick, right? You can always make green grasses all in that pond, just like that, right? Make it have more space for bugs and slugs and snails to hide, right? On this one, I put a dragonfly. You can always draw bugs in the sky. 
I thought on this background, maybe we'll do a moon, I like to make my moon glow. And then maybe I'll color it in with yellow. You can decide what you want on your background. I might put some, some little stars in the sky. Remember, if you can't draw stars, you can always just do dots, or you can do stars and dots. Like, there's so many stars in the sky. How do you think it's coming out? I love it. So I can take my purple and just kind of make it look like the sun is setting. It's Maybe it's the beginning of the evening. Maybe it's the end of the evening. Look at that. You can put some stripes across the sky like it's got a beautiful sunset or a sunrise, or it's late in the evening, maybe it's very windy. You could put swirls in the sky, right? Like it's windy. Maybe you have decided to put a different background. Either way is fine. So, now that you know how to draw this frog, you can maybe teach somebody else. Remember, it's just simple lines and directions and shapes, right? Finding the, putting the nostrils first, using zigzag lines, Curve line circles. We've talked about all of these lines and shapes, right? So today was really great. We learned all about frogs. We learned all about their complex life cycle. We learned how all kinds of fun frog facts. And we drew a frog using simple directions, lines, and shapes. I hope you had a great time, and I'll see you next week.